This is Ag Matters PM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network, brought to you by the Iowa Soybean Association. Your daily recap of the information that affects Iowa's farmers, producers, and consumers, right here in the heart of the heartland. With reports from our award-winning broadcast team of Dustin Hoffman, Riley Smith, and Mark Magnuson. Now, from the IARN studios in Des Moines, here's Dustin Hoffman. It's time now for the Ag Matters PM Closing Market Summary, your source for market analysis and settlement prices from the day's trade in Chicago, courtesy of the folks at agmarket.net. Well, at the end of another trading day, and it's time to talk with Tyler Shaw of agmarket.net. And Tyler, I know we had a slow start to the day in grains. Was that kind of how it was par for the course today, or did we see any changes? Uh, it mostly kind of continued to trade even lower across the board as the day went on. So soybeans took the brunt of it, even though we had a, a flash sale report, uh, really the first that we've seen China come in or confirmed of China coming in and buying any new crop beans. They bought 132,000 metric tons this, uh, in the overnight last night or got, um, got the flash notice this morning. Uh, you know, there's, there have been a few sales to unknown destinations, which is most likely China, but this is the first time we've seen China show up on new crop sales. We're way behind, and that's what uh, a lot of us have been arguing on the bean market, causing some concern is just that lack of, of demand from China for U.S. soybeans really plaguing this market. Corn kind of traded both sides of unchanged, and December corn is going to settle down another penny and a quarter here today. So. Uh, still not a good look for the grains if you're uh, on the hunt for some bullish news. Well, when we talk about China finally coming in to make purchases, I mean, we, we've talked about this at length over the years too, Tyler, where just because they've come in and say they're going to make purchases, I mean, they actually take delivery. Sometimes they defer them, sometimes they cancel them. So is the market just kind of cautiously optimistic or not even really worried about being optimistic about it anymore? Um, I think there's some of that. You know, the, the we've been mentioning this Really, it feels like for like you just kind of mentioned the last few years, uh, the gorilla in the room has been and will continue to be South America and just their increase in uh, land that goes into production for soybeans. China has invested heavily in that market. Uh, and, you know, it, there's no doubt it, it's, you know, the after effects of, of politics for the last four or five years. And they've they've invested to try to source their beans elsewhere. That is off the ground and running, and I don't imagine it's going to change a lot unless we see some major uh, growing, you know, uh, issues within the growing season uh, in Brazil and Argentina moving forward. And you know, it's interesting that you mentioned that when I was there last year, we saw a lot of grain elevators that we would see, you know, just like you would see here that are up in rural areas, but they would have. Chinese signs on them or, or Chinese letters. So you knew that that was being backed. And then talking about the fact that there is no government help for some of these farmers and there's a lot of land that can still go into production yet, you know, without affecting the rainforest in that area. And so when farmers have to pay for it themselves, seeing any outside investment, I mean, that helps offset their costs to begin with. You know, you can't really blame them for to take that money and, and try to set something up as well. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So I, I mean, I, I see that as that that will be the story that continues uh, throughout the years, just the lack of Chinese involvement in the U.S. market, which means we're going to have to find other places to send our beans. Now, there will be some buyers that get displaced by China, you know, sourcing more and more beans from South America. But at the you know the end of the day, we've got to find alternative uses for our soybeans moving forward. Now, also, we know we have the WASD coming up, and I know South American numbers will be one of the things that we're going to be looking at. But also, there's some question on whether or not they're going to start to see any indication of, you know, impact from the flooding that we have seen in, in Iowa, parts of South Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, you know, where some of the good corn acres, bean acres have been, you know, inundated with water. Is that going to start to show up already, you think? Or, or you know, we've talked also that maybe in August before we start to see any results of that. Yeah, I, I our opinion right now is that we won't see any uh, any changes made. Um, we expect yield to show up at 181 on the WASDE report. There again, that doesn't mean that's where we expect yields to be uh, at the final. It's just our job is to try to estimate where 
where the USDA is going to come out in July. And we don't think that uh, there's any justifiable reason for them to lower it based on uh, moves they've made in the past. So we still think you're going to see that yield show up there. Uh, we're going to get the acreage data from the acreage report uh, just a week and a half ago. So we kind of know what that data is going to look like. Um, you know, eventually we'll, we'll probably see harvested acres adjusted um, as a result of that flooding. I just don't see it happening in July. So right now our guess is kind of along with the average trade uh, or the average guess of the analysts, and that's to, to see higher ending stocks uh, on this Wazi report coming out. All right. Well, moving on to the livestock side of things, you look at the cattle and hogs. I mean, what are we seeing in that livestock complex here today? Um, actually, we'll we'll talk with the hogs. We generally don't talk about hogs a whole lot. The August contract at one point was limit down, settled about a tick off of the, a limit move lower. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, we've been paying attention to is the August December spread, thinking maybe that would narrow up a little bit. Felt like uh, you know the uh, the December hogs, your back month, winter month hogs were way you know at a very steep discount to August, and and all they've done in the last two weeks is uh, continued to move at even more of a discount. Uh, finally saw a little bit of correction in that today uh, with that spread uh, starting to narrow up a little bit. Um, you know, it, it's not a good look for August hogs being limit down. It's not, a, it's really, I mean, boy, when you look at those back months, those winter month contracts, like $62 on December, and that's been under pressure like mad for the last week, week and a half, well, really for the last two months, but really came under fire for the last week. Uh, you know, that's going to be tough for a hog producer to, to make that work. It already was. So, um, I would look for that spread that, you know, maybe start narrowing up a little bit and, and probably see more pressure on the front month hogs, which is going to be August here pretty quick. On the cattle side, another down day in feeders. Um, the feeder cattle market's what's given us a little concern in the cattle market. You know, fats, fats had done pretty good. The cash market is still strong. The feeder cash market is still strong. Uh, yesterday was the first day we kind of saw some chink in the armor. The the uh, box beef cutout did drop by about four bucks. I haven't got to look to see what it did today, uh, but I, I think that just got the market a little spooked, singing maybe uh, we finally see the the consumer kind of stepping away a little bit, uh, at least from these uh, really high prices on the box cutouts. Now I know when we talk, uh, you know, sometimes on our market reports, we see a lot of the macroeconomic situation. You know, the consumers are still buying beef; they're still sitting at the steakhouses. They're 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 spending the money on the food. Where you would think in the economic situation we're at, we wouldn't be seeing you know as much activity like that. And you know, the Fed hasn't really lowered any interest rates. I mean, how much is this the market just kind of holding its breath and trying to hold, kind of just you know tread water as we wait to see what the larger economy is going to do as a whole? Uh, it feels very much like that. And that's one of our concerns for producers. Um, you know, it, 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 we could still see higher moves. Uh, don't get me wrong. This thing could punch one more leg higher. I know, uh, I mean, I've been hearing about it for two years from producers, the locale numbers. We haven't fixed that. Um, but you're exactly right. If something breaks on the overall uh, financial or economic side, on the macro side of the economy, uh, that cattle market's got a long, there's a lot of air under there. So we just keep trying to hammer the fact home to producers that if you're unprotected, you need to be looking at something. Um, you know, you, you can still buy protection on your fall calves. And there are ways to kind of manage some risk on, on next year's calves as well. It's not as good. You can't hedge it quite like you can corn and beans. Uh, but there are tools out there that can kind of help us uh, get something out there that if, if this thing does see a drastic drop, we're protected. All right. Well, Tyler, if folks want to look at some of those options, look how to protect themselves, both in the grains and the livestock, because, you know, we just don't know what's going to happen here in the coming weeks and months, and Mother Nature still has a lot of her sleeve. You know, what's the best way for them to get in touch with the folks at agmarket.net to look at some of those options? Look us up online. Our, our name is our website address, agmarket.net. There's a contact page. See if there's a broker in your area. Sounds good. Well, we thank you so much, Tyler, for the insight. We'll talk to you again real soon. You bet. Take care, Dustin. That again was Tyler Shaw of agmarket.net. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break and hear from our sponsor, the Iowa Soybean Association and the Soy Checkoff. When we come back, we'll run down those closing numbers for you. This is Ag Matters PM. Iowa Soybean Association is driven to deliver for Iowa's 40,000 soybean farmers. We're proud to provide objective agronomic research, a helping hand with soil and water stewardship, and timely industry news powered by the Soybean Checkoff. Learn more at IASoybeans.com. 
Welcome back to AM PM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. Let's go ahead and run down the closing numbers on the market screen. At the close, September corn up one and three quarters at three ninety five and three quarters. August soybeans up down eighteen cents at eleven thirteen and a quarter. Soy meal down six dollars and ten cents at three thirty nine twenty per ton. Soy oil sixty one cents lower at forty six thirty four. Chicago wheat down ten and a half at five sixty one and a half. Kansas wheat down twelve and a quarter five sixty five and a half. Minneapolis spring wheat down six and a half at six eleven even. Oats down five and a half at two ninety six. On the Merck, live cattle were down a dime at 182.25. Feeders down a buck 37 at 254.35. Lean hogs down three dollars and seventy-two cents at 84.67. Pork cutouts unchanged at 98.75. And Class Three milk up 14 cents at 19.91. Again, if you need any information on how to weather some of the storm that we're seeing coming up, make sure you're talking with your market advisors. And that brings us to the end of today's show. You can find all our content online at iowaagnet.com. You can also check us out on Facebook, X, LinkedIn, and on our YouTube channel. Don't forget about the free market analysis sent to your mobile device three times a day, openings, middays, and closings through Google, Amazon, Apple, Spotify, and Podbean, or you can find it on iowaagnet.com under the podcast tab. From the IARN studios in Des Moines, I'm Dustin Huffman. For Quentin Slater, Andy Peterson, Riley Smith, and Mark Magnuson, we thank you for watching. This has been Ag Matters PM.